Welcome to Integrated. This is the podcast where we seek to bridge the gap between the intellect and the will so that we can grow as disciples of Christ, surrendering all that we are and all that we have to the truth. All right. Hey, guys, it's me. Sorry we're late. It's totally my fault, and it's going to make for a really interesting episode tonight. Um, We have Darren on joining us to teach me how to cross stitch, but... I lost the cross stitch that, that we bought together to do. Um, so that's why we were late. I couldn't find it. I'm thinking the kids got into my office and decided to like do who, who knows like what a five year old is going to do with that. So probably find it under somebody's bed tomorrow. But my sincerest apologies. Darren's going to do his best to teach me um anyway <laughs> so i am so sorry there is a reason it's just a really bad reason why i'm late so anyway thanks darren for putting yeah. it with me yeah <laughs> okay cool. so i found i did however find a cross stitch pattern um i've oh, been goodness. given i i have been given all kinds of like sewing stuff and apparently cross stitching stuff that i didn't know i had and what have you um so i guess i'm doing a frog <laughs> all right hey that looks great that should, that should still be good and and i love that it's for uh people who are eight years or older because i'm 30 and literally have no idea what i'm doing so well, this is why you're here yeah well i learned how to cross stitch when i was eight did you so i did so how did I, that start well so i grew up on a uh hog farm and i had uh so we had uh about 2,000 head of hog, and I wanted to help because that's what all my others were doing out on the farm helping. But I had four older brothers, and my dad farmed with his brother, and he had three sons who were all older. And so anytime I went out to help, there were like seven or eight guys doing stuff. And anytime they had to go somewhere or anything, it's like, well, there wasn't any room for me. So I got I got told a lot, like, just go back in the house. Like, to do. And so I went back in the house through most of the summer, and that's where my sisters were. And I got bored very quickly. And so I was like, I need to do something. Well, what, what they were doing was cross so like, Well, at least allow me to be productive. So I was like, all right, go ahead and give me a needle and teach me how to do this. So at least I'm not sitting down and doing nothing or, like, just annoying you because that just makes them angry. So, um, yeah, Darren, so your right. audio is breaking up just a little bit. Is um, it? Yeah, it is. I wasn't sure if that was just me, but it's not. Um, okay. Just wanted to give you a heads up. So how many, I, I didn't quite catch it. How many sisters do you have then? Uh, four sisters. Four sisters. And are you then the youngest in your family? I'm the, I'm the eighth of nine. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so I, I guess I'm in good hands here. I do have my sewing kit. Yeah, that's good. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> let's start with, with telling everybody what what they need to do cross-stitching. Well, for the most part, if you are going to start out with a kit, what that is going to provide is everything you need with the exception of a pair of scissors. Okay. All right. So, um, beyond that, uh, something that you enjoy and you want to get into it, then you're probably going to have to eventually invest in a hoop. Um, eight inches is probably the largest that you need. You can get larger, but like getting larger is kind of ridiculous, especially as you're starting out. Um, and there's a couple different hoops you can get. You can get a wooden hoop or you can get something plastic. Uh, I prefer the plastic because when I was starting out, like, the hoop, like sometimes the hoop would just kind of fall apart and I couldn't get it. So as starting out, I would recommend the plastic. They're going to have ridges and they're going to make it a little bit easier to make sure you get it on correctly um, without having that issue of like fumbling with it. Granted, I was eight at the time, but I would assume that most most people starting out are probably going to have you. Um, and then we'll just open up this kit and then 
the way I got started, there's a couple different ways. So I got started cross stitching and embroidery are two terms that can sometimes get a little bit intermingled. Yeah. What are the differences between okay. those? Yeah. So when I got started, this is this the cloth is dirty because it's old. <laughs> but this is kind of what I got started with. I got started with like stuff. I didn't do this oh, one. Cute. By the way. I didn't do this one. <laughs> but th th this is stuff like then do like an iron on print. And then the stuff that I got started with, it usually like was like a cap with like X's all around it. And okay. so it's it's kind of like a cross stitch with tiny little X's. But then you, you learn how to do little embroidery stitches as well. So embroidery is going to be more in a line. So this mouse is done with more like a stem stitch. And then the Friday uh, is done with like a uh, stitch. So you kind of learn some very basic stitches. Um that that um, that are all ultimately going to be foundational stitches. If you ever do any basic sewing stitch, it's basically what you're going to hem your pants with. So uh, it, it's it's a good just foundational uh, baseline for any other sewing that you're ever going to do. So that's one thing that I actually love about tonight is that I'm a woman. I literally don't know how to do any of that stuff. Yeah. And here. I it's the, again, the patriarchy. I'm forced to learn from a man how to do these things. <laughs> so, you know, 100, 200 years ago, you might have anyway. I mean, textile business, I mean, was a big business, uh, you know, back in the medieval ages. Arguably, that's what the, the Robin Hood story is actually about, is the emergence of the middle class uh, right. in, in uh, England. And then, you know, he's like red tights and a hood and everything like he's dressed up in this fancy um textiles so awesome i love that and you are of course the the uh like you're the guy who knows it all i guess so i'm thankful to not be competing against you tonight <laughs> <laughs> i've only i've only seen that explanation like in one place and i'd like, like oh that sounds like a really good explanation and i can't find it anywhere else so <laughs> i don't know how accurate that is well i will say i mean i think a lot of men are used to doing more fine work it's not as i feel like it's not talked about as much but i mean i think about like woodworking and things like that i mean it does require attention to detail and I, like you have to be really good with your fingers you know yeah. um so I I don't really get why men get teased for doing this kind of stuff. It's just because people don't have any skills, practical skills anymore, I think. And so, like, if you have any practical skills, it's weird. I mean, if you go into buy a suit and you want a good tailor, like, you're most likely going to be interacting with another man. And, like, right. I don't know yes. why that's so strange, right? Well, it's kind of like getting your hair cut, too. I mean, I feel like you know, you have your barbers and then you go to like a, a hair salon. And so you have both ends of it. You know, you have the men who are doing the masculine like hair cutting, but the women too. I mean, they have their own version of it as well. So dainty Sauron, <laughs> Connor, <gosh. Yes. laughs> just savage tonight. Yeah. Connor was telling me about how he used to, uh, Oh, <laughs> it's that easy. Okay, so you cut out a little bit, but <laughs> I think the joke was something about how Connor used to like to cross stitch. Am I correct there? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry that my audio's kicking out. I don't have anything else to uh, replace that with at the moment. Oh, that's okay. So let's get started then. So let's say I get my 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 frog. Oh, very nice. You actually and... have it around a ring because the, the the thing didn't come with a ring. It just came oh. with a blank piece of uh ada cloth okay but it's very stiff so i assume that they like and i think because like i said a newbie can get really frustrated with this thing so they were probably thinking let's just get rid of it <laughs> get rid of that frustration <laughs> uh if you plan on you not having <laughs> me either me either I no, didn't... i'm gonna i'm gonna step away very quickly and get myself another uh, ring real quick. I don't have a little three inch ring. Okay. Give me just one moment. Yeah, that's totally my fault. 
My goodness. Yeah. What are the odds that I start getting ready for the show and, and you know, kids, thanks kids. You guys make this awesome. They do, but it just seems like that's just how this, this goes. I figured it'll make it more interesting. I was trying to gauge how long it would take to actually do this project. So I did a small project last night that was a little bit just to kind of get an idea. Kids are the best, Connor, even when they, uh, you know, throw a wrench into things, which they're so prone to do, <laughs> doing. Oh, it just wouldn't be life, you know. Showing up. <laughs> oh, Supreme, Supreme Crusader is here to uh, see you show off your manly cross-stitching skills. Oh, Mac. Way to go. There we go. All right. We, I there we go. Who now I'm has ready. the best dad jokes tonight. <laughs> oh, Connor is. Obviously, I'm going to win just because I have props. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so, the great thing about sticking is that obviously you can, you can get it so that it's kind of finished. Um, inside a hoop. So then, like, then, what do you do with them? This is the yeah. this is one of the things. It's like, okay, so let's say you you finish your cross stitch. You can put what? it in a nice frame, <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't do coke in the back. Or oh. or you can go ahead and turn it into something else. Let's go turn it into a pillow. If, oh my gosh. <laughs> So with nice with a nice backing and wait. So did you actually make that whole pillow? Did you like sew it together and everything after? I don't have a sewing machine, so I had to go to a friend's, uh, get a friend's mom to help me out with it. That's and really funny. She, and then she insisted on wrestling me for it in front of her grandkids. But, oh, uh, I I beat her. So. Oh, wait, <laughs> what? Now she she really so she really did she really I've... did like it. She wanted to keep. It. I have so many questions. You were wrestling with your friend's mom. I don't even, I'm not, I'm just not going to go anywhere with that. We're, we're going to be done with that. Yeah. <laughs> you really did that. I said, no, I can't. I need to make another one so that she can have it. Use them as. Okay. Oh, Jason wants to uh, learn how to cross stitch now. Yeah, that's right. Uh, now, what my sisters did, so they learned how to, they more or less learned how to embroidery, right? Yeah. What they did is they ended up getting cloth that was about uh, this 9 or 10 inch square, like 12 inch square, and they put something like this in the middle of it, and they did about 12 squares, and then they took it to my grandma, and she helped to make a quilt out of it. So oh, all my wow. sisters have a quilt made with their grandma. That's so sweet. Oh. That's so. That's with it. With this skill, is uh, turn it into a part of a larger project. Yeah. So also, whenever you get a thread, it's called floss, I guess, for your own unique project. This is what it's probably going to look like, and then you're going to want to put it into kind of spools. Um. What we have, what you have is just plain string, like just, it's kind of free. Yeah. And this kit, it came with bobbins. Yeah, it did, yeah. <laughs> so I guess we can go ahead and try to get started. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's go ahead and instead of just talking about it. Um, so first of all, you got to figure out where you want to start at. So what's nice is with the kit that you have, Mine, mine just comes with a blank piece of white cloth. Yours has the pattern on actual thing, right? So Right, yep. So uh, in the kit, it came with the pattern kind of off to the side for you to follow. And if you have it with more difficult ones, with like larger ones, this is what it's going to look like. It's just going to look like a, a maze. And so you're hopefully you can get something that's going to have it each color split up for itself. 
Okay. So cross stitch is basically paint by numbers and needlework. <laughs> so go ahead and get out your needle if you have one. I do have a needle. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Did that come with the kit or do you, did you have to pull it out of your sewing kit? Um, I think I pulled this one out of my sewing kit. Okay. And my it's funny because my husband bought this sewing kit. We bought a like a new new to us couch and it had mm -hmm. a tear in the upper seam. So my husband stitched it up. He bought a sewing kit just so he could stitch up the top of, of our yeah. Um, couch. Yeah, I, I would recommend anybody to get I mean, even if you don't want to get cross stitching, you should at least have a sewing kit and at least learn some basic stitches. Okay, so what's this in my sewing kit? That. What is I have it? No idea. That little pick. Yeah. See, it doesn't even have a hook, so I can't even say mm -hmm. it's a crochet hook. It's like a, have you ever done latch hook kits? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. I yeah, never finish a... one because I never have the patience. Yes, making oh. making shatter. Yes. <laughs> I had one of like a, I want to say like a calico cat or something when I was little. And I, mm -hmm. I remember sitting in my closet trying to finish it and I just could never, I was, I just wanted to be outside. It was like, this is too much work and it's ugly. <laughs> yeah. It's, it takes, it takes a little patience, but those are, those are the, those are generally like really easy projects that you get your kids into or whatever. Oh, okay. I know why. Had some uh, latch kit, latch kit projects that they did. Um, so yeah, you're gonna want if you're getting a needle, like if you're getting a needle from like a, a big kit uh, for cross stitch, you're probably gonna want one that has kind of a longer eye. Uh, generally speaking, <laughs> uh, that's usually what's gonna be used for that. Uh, the only thing I would is you want to get one maybe that's a little bit thinner if you're going to be using it for, um, like if you are going to do like a uh, 300 count uh, sheet or something like that, work, mm -hmm. you don't want to be puncturing that with a huge hole every time that you're pulling the needle through. Right. Yeah, because this sewing kit has like ma some really massive ones. Yeah. Um, okay. Now where does this thread start? <laughs> <laughs> so we get for doing it real time. Yeah, right. Okay. So this kit, if you're doing, if somebody's following along at home and then starting with like a sloth, it actually tells you where to start as leads little arrows on the project in the middle of it because you don't have a hoop. Like it's, it's wanting you to start in the middle so that, um, it can at least remain centered in your, your project. Um, I don't like that because I know we're not going to get this done in an hour. So I don't really want just a blob of brown on the middle of a white square. So I'm going to start <laughs> somewhere else. Uh, so as a general rule of thumb, you don't want your, um, you don't actually want to cut the thread any longer than the length of your arm. Okay. Okay. So the so the kit's gonna say eight the kit here is gonna say eighteen inches. For myself, eighteen inches is gonna be about from my hand down to about the my uh where my sleeve cuts off. And so we're only talking about maybe like an extra three or four inches, but that can be a good guide um, if you wanna know how how much to cut it off. And as you're getting started, you probably don't have more than that. Um, the big reason being uh you're probably going to be prone to knotting this up quite a bit. Oh. Okay. And that's, and that's just a ride of pass. And that's, a, I cannot for the life of me get this threading in the needle. Okay. Well, so here's something. Give me a trick. You, here's something that you uh, need to know. So there's going to be like six little threads. I'm going to yep. get this in front of my can photo. Okay. Yeah. You're going to separate two of them. Oh. So, yeah. So sometimes, if you like, if you're doing an embroidery project, if you want to do it, you might do all six. But um, starting out, you'll just use two threads, and then what what that'll do is it also help preserve some of your thread too. You have a lot more of it to go. So I'm only using two of these. Only two strands. Yeah, it'll <gasps> it'll be it'll look thick enough. Really. Yeah, that's how. Well, that's again. This is how. 
This is how you could do three if you want to, if you want a thicker look as we get going, but I think you'll be satisfied with just how uh, two looks. You are an excellent guide. Thank you, Darren. All right, I got it on. Yeah, see, it's a lot easier now, isn't it? So much easier. Thank you. Okay, so the next... I stuck there all night. <laughs> okay, the next piece, after we get through, and then we need to go ahead and tie a knot on the other end. Now, with this eight of cloth, it already has a pre-punctured hole in it. So you want to tie it at least... You're going to have to tie at least two knots over top to make sure that you get an appropriate... To make sure you get an appropriate knot. You might have to do three, um, depending on how hard you like to pull through that initial. Um, Sorry, so I have a crying yeah. kid coming in here. <laughs> oh, sorry. You sorry. didn't hear my brother or my brother, my son crying, did you? <laughs> I I did I could not hear that. Okay, perfect. So oh. this is how the back of my cross stitch looks. Don't so I will tell you that even though that looks good, uh I, I probably made a few sticks there. I just went back and like fixed them before I got done. Okay. So you're going to make mistakes with this. If you do this flawlessly, you're probably a psychopath. So. Oh. <laughs> Solid <laughs> advice. <laughs> or you're just much better than it, than I am, but I, I'm going to go with that. I don't know. It's a, uh, it, most people are going to make a lot of mistakes. They're going to not constantly. Oh, boy. I wonder if anyone else did get any get a pattern. I don't know. I know Rip Your Guy was wishing he had. Am I right? <laughs> you did say something to that effect. <laughs> oh boy. I am I'm as incompetent as they come. Yeah, I see prepping for heaven uh suggested wrapping it around the needle two or three times. To make it a little bit bigger. Oh. So. How would the brother's son work? <laughs> Connor, I don't know. I don't know why I said my brother. It was clearly my five-year-old that was crying. <laughs> I think he's in trouble with dad right now. Oh, Lauren just ordered one. I suppose that makes sense. You can come back and watch this again later. That's right. There we so go. You, you can watch it two times. All right, let me know whenever you're ready. I guess I'm ready. I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Okay, you got your... Ah, I can't... Can you get this? Okay, so you got it threaded. I'm starting with the tongue. Jeez. Which way I'm supposed to go with it? So I'm starting... Where I'm starting is uh, with the face of the sloth. Okay, and to, in order to do that, I basically uh, look at this pattern and then count it in um, to where I think it, it should be. Uh, and then if it if it's not right, that's okay because the way this thing works, it's supposed to cut it all out anyway and then pop it into this little hoop. So um, so go ahead and just start from the bottom and bring your first stitch out. Okay. Okay. Um so this is the hard part because I can't see what your pattern looks like. I'm sorry. <laughs> but but like basically, this is this is like a, a simple game of tic-tac-toe where the X's always win. Um, and so you, you kind of have to think about it a little bit just in terms of where you where do you want your next. Uh, okay. Uh, but we'll just we're just gonna do we're just gonna go just a uh, caddy corner. So we're not going to go right next, but we're going to go catty corner across the square. Okay. Okay. And then we're just going to, then we're going to go directly across right in the back of it. And then we'll go catty corner back across that first stitch and make an X. Okay. 
<laughs> so then when I run out of thread, I just tie I, it just is tied off already. And then I just add a new one, huh? Well, it won't be tied up already not to make sure that it doesn't pull back out. Is that OK? Uh, that looks. <laughs> be honest. <laughs> looks great. That looks great. <laughs> so convincing. I'm so hot right now because I'm like stressed out about not having the. Oh, this is a bad day. To... It's not sweater weather. No. Wow. Right. I I will say that this this needle that came with this project is too large. <laughs> really? Yeah, because it's making it's busting bigger holes into the into the, into the eight cloth, and so then your your final X is like um, a lot tighter than it really needs to be. So I'm going to trade out a smaller needle. <laughs> I'm afraid of wrecking the cloth because I think my needle is a little bit big too. Well, here we go. It's just, it, I guess I know now that I'm not a psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> There's the, the silver lining. I am not a psychopath. I've already messed up. So, yeah. So it looks like your, your, your bit that you have actually has like a cloth. And then it has X is printed on it. Yeah, it does. Right. Mm -hmm. And so so it's you're you're doing the X. So the difference with that, like with the eight of cloth, you can kind of you can kind of turn it around and do it with that with a cloth. You really have to just kind of keep pressing your needle up against the cloth until you get to the right point. And so yes, I I understand what that's like from the beginning standpoint, because like I said, that's how I kind of started. So yeah, that's gonna take that's just going to take a little bit of time to get used to getting that at the right point at the end of that X, because you're going to make some that are a little long. You're going to make some that are a little narrow. Okay. That's just that's when you're starting out. It's just going to happen. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's totally mm -hmm. fine. This is hilarious. So then, okay, learning other, so would you recommend learning embroidery then for learning some of these other stitches? Like, I don't know that you necessarily need to get a full on embroidery kit to learn some of those other stitches. Okay. Um, there are a lot of easy tutorials kind of like online, like they'll, like there's some like big stitching patterns, like you could just draw a line on a, on a piece of fabric uh, and just stitch that line. And then like, and then that would be your practice for learning how to do that embroidery stitch. Okay. Right. Like you don't necessarily yeah. need to get a whole, you don't have to get too invested in this as you're learning. You can try to work out that stitch until you get to a comfortable thing. What's great about starting with cross stitch though, is that you're getting practiced on making smaller stitches. And so that will come yeah. handy whenever you do feed into the embroidery piece yeah because then I... you'll, you're used to making smaller smaller stitches like you're not going too long because if you go too long with a lot of those stitches it looks like crap believe me i know because uh i eventually got impatient <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it did not work out at all so. yeah and i all... have tried so many times to like mend my own kids clothing and i it always ends up really bad yeah, and then I get irritated and I give up and I just go buy them new clothes. But you like how I just simply agreed with you? Like, sure it does. I'm sure. No, it does. <laughs> I think you know. <laughs> I'm learning how to cross stitch from you. I think. I think if you took two is random this... pieces of cloth, is that okay? Yeah. Oh. So, so is the whole tongue like the whole red tongue? Like, I guess the whole tongue is red, right? Yep, the whole tongue is red. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. But the way they stitched it is way different. I oh, it they, is. So what I'm... They might have actually embroidered the inside of it. I think they did. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So it looks like they just did like one strand sideways. Like yeah. they... It's, oh. it's kind of a, a long stitch. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I, 
All right. I do. I mean, if I you want to, if you want to thread a different color and start with like the green that has the, the X's on it. Yeah, maybe I should. See, I thought I would start off in the center and like work my way out. Well, yeah. So, so I would say that you probably don't want to do that. Oh, all right. Yeah, I would well, say I would say if you want to snip, <laughs> snip. It, you always you always want to start at a side and then just start kind of working in uh, because because you're going to get to the point where. So you want to try to try to work it so that you're always working across on it or something like that. So that makes thread, sense. You're just starting there because otherwise you're going to get to the point where you're starting to work out. Then now you have like three or four different points that are all spread out from each other. And now you got to start it again here, cut your strand, start it again. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. I'm just not the brightest bulb. Oh, no, you're fine. This is. This is all new. It's it's totally fine. Thanks, this is, Aaron. <laughs> well, this is what's great about cross stitch is that you make so many mistakes, and you have to be like you have to learn how to accept them. Just have so to. So, is have there because... just like this spiritual? Did you did you become a better Christian by learning how to cross stitch? Yeah, I I became a better Christian by learning how to stab things thousands of times. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot get this string to unravel either. It's all knotted up. Look at this. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. So yeah, you like so so another thing that could so I've never had this issue. <laughs> <laughs> you never but, you're so perfect. <laughs> I'm a psychopath. But part of Sorry, I'm one like oh, you, telling kids they can't be in here again. One thing that you could do is take <laughs> one strand at a time and pull it off. You know, that would just make too much sense and <laughs> just doesn't work for me. Are you sewing that? Yes, honey, I'm doing my best. <laughs> it looks really good. Thank you. I I think if you I think if you were to take like two random pieces of cloth and butter them up together and tried to stitch them together, I do believe that intuitively you would probably do an injury stitch trying just to get that i think i think intuitive, most of it's fairly intuitive it's just taking the practice to make it look like something that you'd want to show off to somebody. <laughs> yeah i mean i want this hanging on my walls right exactly. right i'm <laughs> i'm embracing the more vintage look i'm actually really glad to see all this modern stuff sort of i was thinking about it today because now the economy is going to complete crap and, uh, you know, vintage is kind of in right now in terms of like home decor and everything. Everyone's moving away from like the modern farmhouse thing and they're going back to like vintage stuff. And I thought, this is perfect. I'll just have a bunch of like embroidered cats lining my walls or something. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I legit still can't. I even got a different thread and uh, it's still not, it's like all knotted up. Yeah. So, how long is that thread? This one is long. This is um, you this... might need to you might need to actually measure it up and like instead of trying to up. do the whole length, cut it to the length that you need, and then All do right. that. Maybe. All right. Hey, Elijah, can you go with your dad and go to bed? Sounds too enthusiastic. Ah, uh, yeah. He's our kid that still sleep. He's our toddler that still sleeps in bed with us. He's been like, he never slept since the day he was born, pretty much. So, he wants to be with me twenty four seven. It's still nodding. Look at that. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, see, this is. So this is one of the many skill sets that you learn that you don't really anticipate to learn, but learning how to deal with knots. So, Our lady undo her yeah, knots. Exactly. Like or a pronobis. Develop a, 
develop a good devotion to our oh, lady look, at, our look at that one right after i prayed to our lady it just there came right go. it was there undone we go. thank you mary Okay, yeah, so that's, that's tell me more about you too. because I was, it's so funny when I asked you like what I should, how I should do your introduction. I was like, what, how would you like me to introduce you? And you didn't know what I, I like, you didn't have an answer for me at all. I don't know. I said, I, do I need an introduction? <laughs> you are. <laughs> that is not what you said, but yes. I mean, that's basically true as well. What, like, what are the things that, how how did you end up – so were you raised Catholic? Have you always been yeah. Catholic? Yeah, so uh, cradle Catholic. So my story – what I like to tell people is my story really begins with conception. Your story uh, what? I'm really sorry, begins with conception. Conception. Yeah. All right. That's let's... where that's where I grew up. It's a small town. Oh, conception? Yeah. Town, yeah. Wow. So it, it's a town that uh, got named after a few Irish settlers decided that they didn't know how to write or spell. So they just had a priest in the town for them. <laughs> and he named the town Conception because it was 1856. And this was two years after the dogma of Conception was proclaimed. That is really cool. And the reason why it's called Conception and not Immaculate Conception is because at the time, uh, you were only given 12 characters for the for the post office would only allow you to do 12 characters for the name of your town. So they chose not to name Immaculate, but Conception. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Is it a pretty pro-life area then? I mean... <laughs> It's, it's, it's your typical, I mean, it's, I would say that it's your, your typical, uh, you go to, you're going to find the same kind of characters there. Uh, and I say that because it, while yes, most of the people in town were Catholic, I do know, uh, plenty of people who uh, were not as pro-life as what you would expect them to be. Right. Despite despite living in a town whose slogan is uh, "Where life begins and the party never ends." What? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, <laughs> That's God. the town slogan. Oh. It is also the smallest college town in all the U.S. The smallest college town? Yeah, it's it has a college. It's a seminary college at the bon Benedictine Monastery. Oh. That's in town. And there's only about 200 people total. Less than 200 people total that is like officially part of the town. What are you making? And, and about half of them belong to the monastery. So about half the people who live in Conception are celibate. Oh, wow. Makes for pretty slim pickings there. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't go to Conception if you want Conception. Right. Well, my parents <laughs> tried to make up for it, right? Oh, did they? So well, they, I yeah, I suppose. So they, they made up <laughs> about half the town. Right, right. Actually, it's a funny story because there, it's a, there's three towns in the area. There's Conception, there's Conception Junction. And it has the train station. That's where the Germans settled. Um, because they didn't want to settle in the same town as the Irish. Right. Um, and then there's a that has uh, some Benedictine sisters of perpetual adoration. Um, and at one time, I think my dad mentioned that had, like each one of them at one time had their own parish. So uh, Bishop, Bishop Cody, who later became the Archbishop of Chicago, was at one time the Bishop of uh, Kansas City, St. Joe, and after the basilica, or after the the monastery was named a basilica, by the left, um, he kind of told him, "You guys need to stop using this as a parish church. Like, just use it as a monastery and seminary." So there are not, so they don't do any um, sacraments at the at the basilica anymore, other than um, those related to the actual monastic life. So there's no 
confirmation of baptism or marriages that occur there. That's kind of sad. Yeah. Uh, but Clyde used to have its own parish called St. Benedict's. Uh, and before it closed, it still had 100 parishioners, but those 100 parishioners were made up of 10 families. 10 families? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's uh -oh. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna. It's not gonna do it. So it's interesting because there's a town. I, I went to school at Saint Cloud State University is in Saint Cloud, but nearby is a town called Saint Joseph. Mm -hmm. And in we have Saint, one of those too. Yep, Saint Joe's um, is the town that Benedictine College is in, and we have a Benedictine monastery there. Um, and it's unfortunately super liberal, but um, it's it's just interesting because there's a lot of Catholic history there, and that diocese is not great, unfortunately. Um, yeah, really messy. I feel like I spent most of my college trying to convince the Newman Center on campus how to be Catholic, and I was not a good. I mean, I'm not a great Catholic now, but I was. I mean, I was definitely doing the college thing at the time, but I was still really bothered by <laughs> what was going on there. It was so weird. There were not 10 person families there. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, I know when I went to college, I went to, went to Mizzou. Um, and I, the Newman Center there on campus. Um, it was definitely different what I was used to. Um, but I felt like the priests were at least, they actually they actually made it more solid than what it once was. Really? They, unfortunately, when they designed their parish, they gave far too much input into the, to the parishioners. Oh, yeah. So the original parish wasn't necessarily pretty, but it wasn't like terrible. Terrible. Like, apparently, there were some parishioners I learned, like, actually uh, wanted to put, like, basketball hoops. Shut up. Into, into, the, into the worship space just to be like, see, this is like a normal, like, a regular. It's like, that's not. We're so cool, man. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, no, I'm so glad that they, they at least put their foot down on something. Oh, boy. Um, the priest at our Newman Center when I was there. The priest at the new, sorry, my kids just keep coming in here. I forgot to lock the door. I might have to get up and do that. Um, but the, the priest, when I was there, he now, I believe, is in jail for sexual abuse of a student from when I was going to school there. Yeah, that's it's not just, good. It was a really sad, sad situation there. That's and so actually, one of my adjunct prof professors would wear shirts that said women women should be priests or um, things about like gay marriage and stuff and go up to communion with these shirts with these huge printed letters and they never denied him communion ever. It was crazy. Yeah. I, I feel like there's there's some spirit of that was like we got to try to get along and I, I do appreciate like the the two priests who were at that moment that are while maybe I didn't necessarily agree with all their administrative decisions, mm -hmm. they did they did a good job of like kind of filling a lot of that spiritual there, like kind of um, you know like one of them kind of mentions like it's really kind of it really is kind of like a, a spiritual fatherhood because yes sometimes you want to be hard on people but then you're too hard you know yeah. it's like you you don't want to be too hard on people and make them leave. But you don't want to be too soft on people and make them think that everything's acceptable. And trying right. to follow that tightrope, especially when you're in a, in a community that is already kind of maybe a, leaning a particular way further than what you think right. they ought to be leaning. Like it's just it's hard to kind of just be too too strict one way or the other. Okay, so and then expect you. To be. You went to school there, and then have you like always been a practicing Catholic? Then, uh, yeah, really, yeah. You never so, like see, 
fell away or anything? I was, I, I was a few Catholics who actually always thought that the teaching on contraception made a lot of sense. Like I wow. never had, I never had like that difficulty with it. Okay. Like I, I mean, I, I but the way that the sex education class in high school was done, because at no point did they actually talk about the biology. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? It's like all all we did was talk about how to uh, STDs and of how course, to, uh, yeah, that's like and, and how to and how to and what to do not to get pregnant. Right, like that's yeah, that's pretty that's much it. it. But the actual biology of what's going on, and I just remember thinking at that time, I was like, "There's still that risk," and I feel like if there's still going to be that risk, you, like, you need to be, you need to have acceptance of that responsibility to right. engage in that behavior. And so, the the teaching on contraception always kind of made sense for me, just from that kind of practical standpoint of like. So you've just always been super practical. <laughs> well, yeah, like I, I mean, I, I joke, it, it, well, I, I'd say I joked, it really isn't a joke. I kind of mentioned to somebody, like, if I wasn't really Catholic, I'd probably become Jewish. Because I was like, a Ju- Judaism is really just a, I mean, if you really get down to the brass nuts of it, it's like, it's, it's really just a very practical religion. You know, like, don't eat shellfish and, and or would they say that well if you're not cooking it right it can make you sick <laughs> right right well, that, like it's it's kind of practical that's so funny because when I, there was a time when i was like not sure how i felt about catholicism because of all the scandals and i was just so frustrated with the with the way everything has been the last several years and i was like well <clears throat> i don't believe in pro i don't think protestantism makes any sense to me um and so i was like okay well i'm left with like the three big religions i guess and i know islam is totally untrue so that kind of left me with judaism and i was i remember researching it and thinking and you know is this is this the the true faith and then coming to the conclusion that typology and scripture just doesn't make sense without the figure of christ so i was like all right i guess i'm just kind of stuck here with catholicism um but yeah i mean it's it's interesting that that would be your mindset and from more of a practical standpoint. Yeah. Well, you know, and somebody tried to challenge me on that. Well, why wouldn't she pick some, like, if you weren't uh, Catholic, why wouldn't she pick one of those other Christian religions? Because I already know that they're fake. Well, yeah. Well, the thing is, is that if I'm going to reject fake, maybe Catholicism, I'm not going to reject it because I don't believe in the, the Eucharist, or I don't think I should be like, there's plenty of Catholics who still are Catholic and still refuse those things. Right, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, that's not a reason to leave. Like, the biggest reason to leave would be would be because Christ wasn't truly God. And so I was like, if, yes. if I'm going to come to that conclusion, yes. then why would I pick another Christian faith? Exactly. Yep, exactly. Well, I am partly done <laughs> i think i'm gonna have to start a new thread it looks terrible <laughs> go ahead and show me i want to see it oops hey no that looks great <laughs> that, looks that actually looks pretty decent thanks <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, no, it's, listen, how far it's... are you on your sloth i want to see the sloth i was I... so excited to do the sloth I just, I just have part of the face done i'm almost I'm almost done with the face, and then I'll start being able to get the brown oh. in. So this is almost the face. I think yours looks great, Mama. Thank you, Avery. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go to bed. Oh, I'm cleaning up the downstairs. You are not cleaning up the downstairs. Yes, I am. I just want to come. Do you Do you guys hear her? She's telling me she's cleaning up the downstairs right now. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that's what she's doing. Do you see that she right is there, not standing <laughs> right there next to you? I see. That's, that's exactly what she, she's doing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is my life, all day, every day. Go listen to your dad. Shut. Can you lock the door before you leave, please? And and then close it. No. All right. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> Don't believe your lion eyes, Mom. 
Oh, look, this one's back, too. It's just a revolving door. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh. Okay, so, like, how does one finish off a cross stitch? Because we're kind of coming up close to the end of, of an hour. So let's say you, you finish doing this. Like, what do you, I mean, you tie it off. Is there any way to, like, kind of retroactively go back and fix things? Or, like, what do you, Well, how do you do so it? In the terms of, of like it. retroactively going and fixing things, I mean, you really want to kind of fix things as you as it. you as you make the mistake. Yeah, <laughs> that be the, that's going to be the easiest, um, obviously. Uh, but uh, if you if if you get too far and you realize, man, I really made a big mistake. The I mean, you're just going to have to start unstitching everything you did. Yikes. Right. So, yeah. or like if you make a too big of a knot where it's like, I'm wasting far too much thread and I don't want this big knot on the back of it, you'll just have to cut it out. And that may mean that you need to, you know, undo a few stitches so you can tie it up in a knot on the back end. What's the most you've had to do to like fix one of your projects? <sighs> so, not with, not with this cross stitching, but with my, um, bead weaving i've had to basically i basically had to like take it all because <laughs> i realized like i just messed up so bad like it's, it's like but i didn't want to just waste all those beads and leave like a half done project I, just, I don't know i'm not i'm not the type of person that likes to have half done projects if they're mistakes just laying around so right i just had to that does not surprise me in the least so, how did you get into bead weaving then? Well, I was I was married for eight years, um, and so for before I was married, when I was still engaged, I made I went to like I was trying to figure out something to make for her birthday, and I went to like Michael's I think and picked up this kit for like bead weaving mm -hmm. and I had or not bead weaving even just like just um stranding a, a necklace or whatever and I had no idea oh my gosh that is so sweet okay and sorry I, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing so I was like I was like I could make anything but I'll just make what the picture shows on box. so I just duplicate replicated what was on there and she thought, she was like, oh, wow, like you actually were able to do that. And I was like, what's so difficult? I just looked at the picture. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I figured it out. Like, it's not like it's not like it's rocket science. Um, but you realize that you were like kind of good at it. I, I don't know. I don't know if I was or not. But anyway, I, I uh, so we moved up to Michigan and in the in the town nearby, there was a um, bead shop and they did classes so like bead weaving. oops I I went ahead and did a knot for this so I'm going to show you how to knot this out okay Okay. so when you get done right you're going to turn this over uh, you can see that I uh, uh, this is a light thread but you can see I kind of messed up I, I bunched it up but you're just going to you're going to Run the how do I do this? Run the needle through one of the the stitches on the back side, and we're just okay. gonna pull it through. And then with the loop that you loop that you get created, you're going to tie it off. It, tie oh, it, you know, and, then, and then it'll make a knot, and then it'll pull that down, and then you can just cut it off from there. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's good to know. And so. You want to be careful not to ever let your thread get too short. <laughs> I made that actually, mistake already. That you can't tie it off. I, I try to see how short I can go. And so sometimes I have to like, I've never, sometimes I actually have to take it off the, like get it through and then take it off the needle real quick just so I can like get that back in. Uh, but I try to get it as tight as I can as possible. That is good. 
Are there any other essentials that you think people ought to know when they're doing the cross stitching? Uh, a big part of it is just patience. So like you're going to knot up. I'm kind of surprised you didn't knot up on the back side. Oh, I'm sure I did. I mean, it's oh, a complete have mess you, back Have you there. not been looking at it? Not really, oh, no. The, oh, that doesn't actually look like that big of a mess. I mean, it looks like it's <laughs> supposed to. And I don't. I mean, I can't tell exactly, but it looks like it's almost what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> but but um, usually if you catch one of the knots, about 90% of the time it's going to be really easy to fix. To, to figure out if you, it's going to be like a, uh, almost like a shoelace. Um, oh, yeah. Like loop. Like if you tug that loop a little bit. Uh, you might find that it starts giving and then you could just slip it right off. Like that knot will just slip right off. So okay. about 90% of the time, that's, that's probably what it's going to be. It's just, and that's getting created because your, your, uh, your thread's just getting kind of twisted like a telephone cord kind of thing. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So they're usually pretty easy, but if you keep yanking at it, like, yeah, just keep pulling it. It's like, it's going to tighten up that knot and it's going to make it a lot easier or a lot harder, sorry, not easier, a lot harder to get it out. So whenever you feel that knot, don't keep to pull it. <laughs> That's good advice for pretty much everything. I always tell my kids, if it's not, if something's not coming or working the way, like easily yeah. and it's supposed to, you're probably doing it wrong and you need but sometimes, to stop. But sometimes you expect that knot to just kind of like pull right yeah. off. And so yeah. sometimes if you just give it a little bit more of a tug, it will do that. So <laughs> if you're eight and you're impatient, <laughs> you'll think, ah, I could just, this is the way to do it. Um, but it's not. But it's definitely not. It's definitely not. Well, I thank you so much. I'm going to try and work on finishing this sometime here, but by, by the end of the week, if you Just get so to I a can point, post it. If you get to a point where you feel like you need a little bit more assistance, just let me know. Well, for sure. We'll try to we'll try to troubleshoot. So, Darren, what do you have going on here? We're going to wrap things up here, and uh, I would love to see if anyone else has joined us. Um, oh, good night, Mac. I don't know. Oh, you're just going now. Okay, good night. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up here. But if you joined us at all and you happen to be cross-stitching, I would love to see pictures of it on Twitter. Or if you go back and watch this later and do this pattern, I want to see a picture of it. I want you to post it to Twitter and tag me and Darren in it um, <laughs> just to see <laughs> see how your pro project goes. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks for joining us. We had a lot of fun. Um, at least I did. I, I know it didn't seem like it maybe cause I'm like hyper-focused now. Well, yeah, like it's... that's, that's the difficult, like even, even it's like, we're just kind of working on this project and like, we're not really stopping to show what we're doing or how far we're going to see it. It's like, it's we kind of started, but like, you can kind of see too, as you kind of get going, it is kind of like a, it, it is a little bit of a game of tic-tac-toe where you have to really be thinking about how to go. So if you if you do happen to find your slot, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they do I'm have. Telling you, it's probably stuffed under one of my kids' beds or something. I don't. know. They do have like helpful guides to tell you kind of how to uh, do the stitching inside of it to do different stitches. Okay. Uh, and so sometimes, so one of the things that you can do, like if you have a long row of a color, is just kind of yeah. do one stitch. And then come back and get the other stitch done. Okay. So sometimes that that makes it a little bit easier. That's good to know. Well, I makes it feel it. like it makes it feel like it's going faster anyway. Oh man, your your audio went kind of goofy again. <laughs> but uh, what what do you have going on here? Where can where can people find you besides Twitter at? Uh, That's it. That's it. <laughs> 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 that's how we got to know you well since yeah. you, but you're also often on so you think you know I'm, the face I, on that i'm, I'm uh, on with Connor for his uh review i have not seen any of the new rings of power but that's part of what that show is is he explains what happened gives a recap and, he, uh, and then we we talk about 
how well it relates to the books or how poorly it relates to the books. Oh, awesome. Uh, so yeah, go make sure you check out Connor's um, podcast plot lines. Um, Connor was in here. I don't know if he's still in here. He, he went. Oh yeah. He also says he's, he's reminding everybody to please like this episode. I believe. I, I hope he's talking about this episode. <laughs> I'm not a different one. Um, but please like this if you guys enjoyed it. I sort of wanted to do something. I feel like everything is kind of doom and gloom right now. I'm like, I just want to learn something practical and yeah. not be so doom and gloom right now. We need yeah. some of that right now. I feel so. like this is the easiest thing to do as terms of like stitching. Like you can't really, can't really sh do like a, a – a uh, actual sewing machine tutorial. Yeah. Because yeah, if something goes wow. wrong, it's like, yeah, how do you troubleshoot <laughs> that without being there? Like, it's really... Oh. No, this was perfect. Um, maybe we'll do it again sometime when I find my sloth. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, thanks so much. Um, oh, good. It was very calm. Like, see? Perfect. And I, it's funny. I was listening to Michael Knowles talk recently on his podcast about how, you know, he generally likes to read a lot, which I'm, I think you and I both also, I'm guessing like to read a lot, but yeah, every once in a while doing something that activates the other side of your brain is more calming. So doing more creative stuff is a better way to unwind if you're used to doing a lot of reading, yeah. which well, is like, probably explains why you like, I mean, I would imagine this. Yeah. Is like that's, that's why I got into doing these lamps too oh yeah. you are so creative that's so awesome i love it Did you see my uh dollar bill on the wall yes yeah it's the first dollar I ever made that big dollar oh yeah i made it all by myself <laughs> stop it stop. i even put a little plaque on you win you win for the best made. dad joke <laughs> <laughs> all right you win for the best dad joke that was perfect <laughs> perfectly executed oh my gosh <laughs> well on that note um thanks so much everybody for joining uh joining darren and i tonight for uh my my cross stitching lesson um please like this episode subscribe hit the bell this isn't my typical content but you know what <laughs> maybe i'll do more stuff like this i think it would be fun to do like a bob ross episode of me painting there we go that would be a lot Happy of little accidents, right? Happy little accidents. <laughs> I have heard that I am, my voice is kind of like the uh, female Catholic version of Bob Ross. So I might have to get like an afro and just. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, that would be so funny. So anyway, thank you so much. God bless everybody. And I hope to see you next week with something. All right. We got to do the outro. I'm, I'm the worst at this, by the way. So thanks for hanging in there, like you guys. It.